Here we see Creo 5 with an active geometry. If you start Creo with the XPLM integration, you can see that there is a native ribbon showing all of the PDM relevant functions. We can connect. We can save. We can load. We have functions to manage access control, synchronization of properties, managing bombs. There are also interactions with the PDM, such as opening a discussion panel and functions for interacting with the workspace. First, we connect to the PDM. Here we see the login dialog where you can select different environments. For example, you can choose between training and production databases. When we log in, we receive feedback that the connection was successful. We can get an overview of what is currently in our working directory by clicking on Show Workspace. At the moment, we can see that the mounting plate is in our local workspace, namely CAX TMP. Since the PDM is still unknown, there isn't any PDM information yet. We will immediately save this component in connection with an assembly and see that at this point, it is then given a PDM number. We then launch the PDM to see what our current tasks are. We see that we have to carry out an eco here. Let's open it now. The eco contains descriptions of what needs to be modified as well as any attached components that need to be modified. We see that this is component 212 that was carried over from revision A to revision B. We take a closer look at the component. We have attached a part number and a revision. There are also two CAT documents attached to this part. A 3D data set from Creo and a drawing from Creo. We can review the files directly on the part. For example, we can see and rotate the 3D geometry and visualize it accordingly. It is also possible to look directly at the drawing which is loaded at this point with the appropriate zoom. Eris has the so-called Secure Social. We can see that there is already redlining on this drawing. For example, we need to add some dimensions here, which we will do in Creo. We will now open the dataset in Creo and first take a quick look at the bomb. This bomb was generated from Creo. Now we open the corresponding drawing directly in the PDM with a double click. We can review everything again in the drawing. The native file is the drawing. The PDF is generated by the XPLM interface. Now let's load everything into Eris. Here we can see that the status is preliminary, which means that we can also change the model in CAD. We do this with the load to CAD function. And we run load from client in order to download the drawing in our local workspace. Here we see the drawing. We want to load it with the current components because we are making the change. All files are new and will be downloaded to our workspace accordingly. This is the drawing. If we now look at the workspace again, we will see that there are considerably more objects in our workspace at this point. We downloaded a lot of components that are all familiar to the PDM. We see a lot of them are in release status, so we can't change them. 
However, the drawing in revision 2 is preliminary as is the assembly, so both can be changed. Our mounting plate is still not known to the PDM. We can also display the discussion panel directly here in Creo and see which modifications are to be made to the drawing here. Our to-do is displayed directly in Creo. We will now make the change by opening the 3D model and then adding the components we need to add. Let's place the component. And with the appropriate fastenings, let's open the 190 from the family table and add that here. Let's do the whole thing again so that the component is properly attached. We have three of these components here. Let's then delete one of them so that there's a modification shown in the bomb afterwards. We're now done with the changes to the 3D. Let's take a look at what we had to do here once again. Open the discussion panel and you can also give feedback to other users directly in Creo. This makes it possible to interact with the PDM directly from Creo and to send messages and view the redlining in the PDM. Let's save the modified elements after making the changes. Let's use the Save Update function for this. In the Save Preview, we can see that modified components are marked with a small orange arrow. We modified the assembly because we added components. We added one unknown to the PDM, the mounting plate. Let's download all instances known to the PDM for this component. We see that this component is a family table, and all of these components are known to the PDM. We have a few functions in the interface for managing family tables. There is, for example, the Save Family Table function, but there's also the option of downloading all instances of this component to the workspace. After we have downloaded all the instances, we can save the geometry. We see that our instance here is now known to the PDM. It has been released and cannot be changed at this point. The mounting plate is a new PDM object. Let's enter a description. Then save the assembly and the new mounting plate. All other objects cannot be saved because they are already released. After saving the 3D geometry, let's also update the bomb. We do that with the create bomb function. Here we can see that there is already a bomb that is now being updated. When deriving the bomb, we can take into account that some components may not be included due to certain criteria. For example, skeletal models need to be included in the parts list. We also see that released parts are not updated, of course. Rather, only those parts that are being worked on.
Next, let's update the drawing. We see that the view has already been updated and the newly added components can be seen in the drawing. We have an update title block function that is able to retrieve extensive information from the PDM and display it in the title block. We see that the revision has been updated at this point. Here, the discussion panel is also available so we can see what we need to do. We need to add a few more dimensions, which we are doing here at this point. The drawing can now also be saved. Again, we see the save review. We see that the other components have not been modified. Our mounting plate has not been changed and accordingly does not have to be saved. The assembly and the drawing have been modified, however. So let's save them again. When saving, the XPLM interface creates a PDF of the drawing. We can now visualize this accordingly in ARIS. Our work in Creo is now complete. We can now release the data in the PDM. To do this, let's switch over to the PDM. We can update that here. We see the drawing here. On the drawing, we can see that it is the updated geometry with the corresponding notes. ARIS also offers us the opportunity to make a comparison between the old and the new drawing. Here is the new drawing and here is the old drawing. We can also highlight the differences, for example in red, so that we get an overview of all the changes. We can see the changes that have been made to the location on the drawing. We can navigate back to the part and update it. we see that the correct revisions of the CAD documents are now attached to the part. We can also see directly what messages the user has left in Secure Social in Creo. The updated 3D geometry is also immediately visible in the ARIS. The last thing we do is verify that the bill of materials has been updated. We use the redline view function to compare the old and new bombs. Changes are shown in red, while newly added components are shown in blue. We have now made the changes and can now release them. To do this, we go through the workflow and enter the password. The change is now complete. It has been given a release status. If we switch back to Creo here, we will also see it here, where the components are shown as released.
That's it for our demo today. Let's disconnect from the PDM and close all objects, and also clean up our local workspace so that no files remain.